let's continue the tutorial with the field definition as you remember we already have the repetitive section defined and we already get uh, for each line within the file a result set in the target definition and now the only missing piece is the fields and of course we have to extend the root definition once again um, in order to retrieve the data from each field and for that reason we can again use the right click on the specific element and now you see that uh, there is already the field element available and we can add a couple of fields let's do that maybe we use three or four fields and here again um, please uh, rename them in a speaking manner so that we know at the end of the day what is going to happen. Huh? So uh, what do we need in order to process the file? We of course need minimum for example the account ID um, so for which um, house bank account we are going to process uh, the file. So let's call it account ID for example and what else do we need we might need the due date huh? so let's add a due date field and of course we need the amount of the transaction huh? and what else we need for example the remarks yeah for the posting huh? so we received from the credit card company what was the was transaction about and we want to transmit that also to the remark field within sap business one so let's do the remark field huh? good so we leave it that way huh? so we can still process it nothing will happen because we didn't do any mapping yet from the source definition to the target definition um, so we still get the same result set but basically you see already we didn't finish but you see already how little is needed to do a mapping via EFM uh, so maybe we have a um, couple of more entries but <laughs> it's at the end of the day done fairly easy uh, all you need to do is this simple root definition and then you are already basically done uh, at the moment the root definition however is still incomplete if we would process now the account id it still contains the full line because we didn't do any limitation so each field at the moment will uh, receive the full data from each line which is not usable uh, you can't use the full line to uh, kind of map into a specific field so um, how to then limit the result set from the file into this field which we need and of course you can do that again through the uh, bottom left property window uh, you see here how it is uh, located and um, we can go again um, with a regex rule um, and define the regex rule so maybe after the specific character we get a specific uh, entry in our case it's much much easier because we have a comma delimited uh, CSV and that is a predefined option within the location method uh, methodology and we can simply go and go through this definition through the already used separator in our case remember we have used the separator uh, comma each column stands for a new field and then we have an index so the first column the second column the third and so forth and um yeah let's do um for example the first and um i remember the date was i think the date itself was also in first column so also repeat this location for the date field 
Um, so we use the first column for the date field as well. The amount, actually now I have to check out the file again to see in which column the amount was. Let's uh, open it again quickly to see that. I can simply do account, then you know it. So the amount is on P, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is on index 16. Huh? Good, let's do the amount to index 16. Still comma index 16. Good. Let's just go through the test. We don't do the definition yet uh, in total, but let's go through the test. We will simply uh, drag and drop the amount, for example, to the local currency field, which is further down, as I remember. Yes, let's do it to the credit amount and the date field, the due date uh, to the bank statement due date field and run the simulation again huh? and see if we receive a correct result. So it's still an error. Okay, uh, yes, the file is still open. That you can't do. So we will close it again, run the simulation again and see if it works. Yes, it does. Perfectly. So again, we have for each uh, line in the file a result set in the target and everything got f uh, fully recognized. Now we can go to do the final, uh, the final definition. But we have the amount, we have the date. Um, yeah, let's do the remaining part. Let's do the remark. Oh, of course, I have closed it again. Um, sorry for that. Remark we use again and then we will do the translation for the test in SAP. Um, here we go. Sorry for that. Yes, comment eliminated. Now remark is here, description. Huh? which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, index 6. Do we need something else? No. Okay. Um, then let's do the remark in index 6. And drag and drop it to Details. I think it's called uh, within the bank statement from SAP and run the simulation again. Okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> I've opened the file. Good. Run the simulation again and see if you're happy. Yes. Uh, so each line has a description that is coming from uh, the credit card company and such. I don't know what it is meant but at the end of the day it's what we receive and that is what is uh, recognized. Good. Now we would be already finished um, so let's save it quickly. Uh, we could process it however there's one small not a mistake but we want to make it professional and uh, I can tell you what I mean. We have minus figure within the credit amount. Huh? So that is kind of not really sexy and we want to get rid of this minus figure because we don't want to have a minus credit policy. If it is minus, it's credit. If it's positive, it's debit. Huh? And in order to do that, we have to uh, modify this amount field to be a more logical field. Huh? Or at the end of the day, it's not a definition in the source because the source is the source. We read it, uh, we have it defined, uh, defined already how we read it. Now the modification is in how it lands, huh? how it lands here. And of course, once we need to modify the target, 
we do not use the property windows on the left bottom anymore. We use the mapping setting on the top right. There is where we define the target. And here we have uh, again a couple of options. I will not dive into all of those, but I can refer to a very good help section um, in or within the EFM tool, the online help. I don't have it installed, uh, but please install it. It's a very good one. Uh, doesn't matter. I know it by heart anyway, but feel free to go through this uh, help file because every function and uh, mapping setting is explained very well in the help file. Uh, in my case, um, we will simply, because it's very simple, um, we will just remove this minus um, character within the character itself. And for that reason, we can call the replace function. Uh, um, very simple, as you might know it from VB, C sharp, SQL, whatever. And we go to the um, result set itself. We indicate that with a dot, and then we replace the minus um, character with an empty character, and then it's already it. Let's see how it works. Fantastic. So we already have the minus figures uh, done, but now we want to do a bit more. If we have a minus figure, um, we want to have it in the credit amount. However, if there is no minus figure, which means um, it's positive, then we want to have it in the debit amount. So how do we do that? With a condition. Uh, and you see it already on the top, top right, the condition section. So let's go through the condition. And yeah, let's do it. Huh? So we, we need to replace the minus figures anyhow but we will only use the field if a specific condition is true. And in our case, the condition that we need is that our reference field, which we, by the way, called amount. So if the amount field has, contains a constant value minus, so if it is a minus, um, within the amount field, of course, then we have a credit amount. And then if uh, we don't need the else, because that's all we need, but we need the opposite condition. Ah, now my function has gone. Let's quickly write it again. Here we go. And do the same with the debit amount. Huh? Let's drag and drop the amount again. You can drag and drop multiple times and now here it's the same definition in a different way the condition is again if our reference field amount in our case now contains or does not contain a minus in that case we're going to populate the debit amount Good. Let's do that with the same function. Um, no, we don't need it because if there is no minus, of course, we can use the source directly. Uh, we don't need any replacement. Uh, well, that is it. That is all we needed. Let's run the simulation. So no minus figures left. Do we have any debit amount in the statement? Let me check. I'm sure there is. Um, let's quickly have a look.
I didn't see it, but I think there is one. We will find out once we will process it in our final video with an SAP this one. But so far, that's basically it. Uh, in a nutshell, the basics of EFM. You see, all it needed is five lines of the root definition and maybe one or two condition and then you are done. Huh? So let's go ahead, save it and we will use it then in the last video and implement it and use it in SAP Business One. Thank you very much.